In this video, we're going to look at the change in momentum of the object, or impulse, and use that impulse to find the force that acted on an object. In this first problem, we have a tennis ball with a mass of 0.2 kilograms, and it's moving to the right in the positive x direction at 30 meters per second. It hits a tennis racket and bounces back to the left at 25 meters per second. The ball was in contact with the racket for 0.5 seconds, and we're going to use that to find the force that the racket exerted on the tennis ball. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate the momentum of the tennis ball as it's going towards the racket, and then the momentum of the tennis ball as it leaves the racket. The momentum of the tennis ball as it's going towards the racket is the mass times the velocity, 0.2 kilograms times positive 30 meters per second. So the initial momentum of the tennis ball is positive 6 kilogram meters per second. The momentum of the tennis ball as it leaves the racket is 0.2 kilograms times negative 25 meters per second. Momentum is a vector. If the positive x direction is to the right, when it bounces back off of the racket, it's returned straight back so it's returned in the opposite direction that it was initially moving. So that final velocity needs to be negative 25 meters per second. 25 meters per second in the negative x direction. So the final momentum of the tennis ball is negative 5 kilogram meters per second. So from this, we can calculate the change in momentum of the tennis ball. The change in momentum of the tennis ball, or the impulse, is the final momentum, negative 5 kilogram meters per second, minus the initial momentum, positive 6 kilogram meters per second, or negative 11 kilogram meters per second. For a constant force, the impulse is the force times the time. So we're going to make the assumption that the force of this tennis racket on the ball is constant. So the impulse delivered by the tennis racket is the force times the time or negative 11 kilogram meters per second equals the force times 0.5 seconds. And this gives a force of negative 22 newtons or 22 newtons to the left. We made the positive x direction, the initial direction that the ball was moving, so this force was acting in the opposite direction to stop it moving to the right and make it start moving to the left. So the force of the tennis racket on the ball is 22 newtons to the left. This next problem is very similar, except we have an object that's moving in two dimensions. So we have a one kilogram steel ball that's moving at 8.14 meters per second, and it hits a wall at an angle of 53.6 degrees with the normal or perpendicular line drawn to the wall. It bounces off the wall at the same speed and the same angle, and the ball is in contact with the wall for 0.184 seconds. And we want to find the average force that's being exerted on the ball by the wall. So just like in the last example, we're going to calculate the initial momentum of the ball and the final momentum of the ball, but we're going to look at the momentum in terms of its components. We're going to look at the x component and y component of the initial and final momentum and then we can calculate the change in momentum in the x direction and the change in momentum in the y direction. The change in momentum in the x direction is related to the force in the x direction. The change in momentum in the y direction would be related to the force that's in the y direction. So let's look at the initial and final momentum vectors. The initial momentum of the ball is the mass, one kilogram, times the velocity, 8.14 meters per second. So the initial momentum is 8.14 kilogram meters per second. And so now we need to break this into components. In the diagram, we can see that the angle that the velocity makes with the x-axis is 53.6 degrees. So the angle that the momentum vector makes with its x component is the 53.6 degree angle. And using sines and cosines, we can find that the x component of the momentum is 4.8304 kilogram meters per second in the positive x direction, and the y component of the momentum is 6.552 kilogram meters per second upward. Now let's look at the final momentum. Because it bounces off at the same speed and the same angle, we can quickly calculate those values. So the momentum is still 8.14 kilogram meters per second, and the x and y components are the same, except the x component is now to the left. 
4.8304 kilogram meters per second. The Y component is still up and is 6.552 kilogram meters per second. So if we look at the Y direction, the momentum does not change in the Y direction. It was moving upwards, it continues moving upwards, the Y component of the momentum stayed constant. That's because the force that the wall exerts on the ball is only in the X direction. There's no force in the Y direction, so there's no change in momentum in the Y direction. In order to have the momentum change in the Y direction, we would have needed to have a force in the Y direction as well. If this ball had some size to it and we put some spin on the ball, and so then there was friction between the ball hitting the wall and the wall itself, for those that play basketball, if you put spin on the basketball when it hits the backboard, you can get it to kind of jump off of the board or, or kick to the side a little bit because of the spin. That would be because that friction force would be parallel to the wall in the y direction, which would allow the momentum in the y direction to change. Here we don't have that. It's just bouncing off the wall. The wall is just exerting a force perpendicular to itself. There's no spin to this ball. We're treating the ball as just a a tiny point that's moving towards it. We're not looking at the size of the ball at all. And so the change in momentum in the y direction is zero. But the change in momentum in the x direction is not zero. It was moving to the right initially, and now it's moving to the left. The change in momentum in the x direction is the final x component, negative 4.8304, minus the initial x component, positive 4.8304, so the change in momentum in the x direction is negative 9.6608 kilogram meters per second. And then this becomes exactly like the last problem. We know the change in momentum, we know the time, we can use it to find the force. The change in momentum of negative 9.6608 kilogram meters per second, or the impulse of negative 9.6608 kilogram meters per second, equals the average force times the time. So the average force is negative 52.504 newtons, or the magnitude of the force is 52.504 newtons, and the direction is to the left. Magnitude means how big the force is. That's what we were asked for in this problem. The fact that we got a negative force meant that the wall pushed to the left. And going up and looking at the diagram, when this ball hits the wall, we know that the wall is going to be pushing to the left on the ball to make it bounce off to the left. Again, these two problems are very simple problems relating force and impulse. Uh, they're very common things that relate the idea of the change in momentum and using that change in momentum to find the force acting on an object if we know the time, or if we know the force, we could calculate how much time that force was acting.